Amir, it's great to see you today. Thank you. Last week, uh, a video of you went viral as you're in Russia today, saying that Russia would have to pay for what it's done in Israel. I understand you're on the Russian payroll, and I understand this is a Russian propaganda, but you have to be very careful, because let me tell you, we're going to finish this war. We're going to win because we're stronger. After this, Russia will pay the price. Believe me, Russia will, Russia pay, will pay the, the price. price. Russia is supporting the enemies of Israel. Russia is supporting Nazi people who want to commit genocide on us. And just Russia will pay the price. Russia also. Now, let me listen to me very carefully. We are going to finish with these Nazis. We're going to win this war. It's going to take the time it's going to take, but we're going to win this war. Afterwards, we're not forgetting what you are doing. We're not forgetting. We will come. We will make sure that Ukraine wins. We will make sure that you pay the price for what you have done. You as Russia and you and as all the enemies of Israel and you as all the people who are now making everything they can to support genocide of the Jews in Israel. We are not forgetting. What has Russia done in Israel and what do you think is going to happen next? Well, what happened is that, uh, first of all, the, the Israeli citizens, Jews mostly, who have been butchered in the most horrendous way by these uh, Islam of Nazi terrorists, have been butchered with mostly Russian weapons. It has to be uh, uh, said, uh, weapons manufactured in Russia or produced locally with Russian license. That's the first point. Beyond that, um, there are all kinds of signs which show that uh, yeah. at least at some level, uh, Russia knew that something was cooking, maybe not technically operationally, but uh, there have been uh, high-level meetings between the Hamas terrorists uh, leadership and uh, Russia uh, over the past few months. Uh, there is There seems to be proof of a, a money transfer through uh, some sort of a crypto... Uh, uh, exchange a few weeks ago of uh, close to $100 million uh, from uh, Russia to uh, uh, Hamas, etc., etc. That's ante, that's pre previously to the, to, to the 7th of October. But what is more significant is that afterwards, after the 7th of October, we have seen an out, a crazy outpouring of hatred, of anti-Semitic, base, terrible, uh, anti-Semitic hatred on uh, via all the usual channels of uh, Russia propaganda. So this is a sign that does not lie. It's because this does not come uh, spontaneously. It comes because it has been encouraged uh, by the government, by the uh, Russian government. So it is clear that uh, Russia is uh, supporting hatred against Israel. You can see that they even accused Israel of being guilty of uh, of these horrendous acts and um there has been no sympathy expressed uh, uh officially by russia uh for for israel and, and and the victims and you can see political support for hamas so these are all signs which are clear and um yes i think uh, the time will come not now but time will come when a re retribution will be exerted ukraine for a year and a half or more at this point has been fighting Russian terrorism. Russia, which is aligned with Iran, surprise, supplying drones and other assistance, which is helping to kill Ukrainian civilians every day. Yet Israel has been slow to support Ukraine. Why is that? And do you think that'll change now? Yeah, so as you can see, Israel is in a very, very unique situation. Uh, as the whole world can see now, it's, it's obvious we are, we are surrounded by genocidal uh, enemies who want to uh, literally physically wipe us out all of the map and they want to kill every single Jew in this country. So Israel is in a very, very complex national security situation and there's no other country in the world really which has the same sort of, uh, of, of situation. So Israel has been trying its best to de behave diplomatically and not to provoke Russia because Russia, of course, is a major backer of, of, uh, of Iran and uh, of Hezbollah and Hamas and all these people and uh, the Assad regime in Syria. And uh, uh, there was, if you want, a, a sort of understanding that, uh, that you know, not to, to go against Russia too much because that could be detrimental to Israeli national security's interest. 
Uh, that was true. I think there was no other choice for the Israeli government than to behave this way. But of course, most probably, once this uh, war between us and the Hamas, and uh, maybe, and unfortunately, hopefully not, but still in the north with uh, the Hezbollah, uh, ends, hopefully, in victory, then I think uh, time will come for reckoning. Because, uh, you know, it's one thing if you want to try to behave diplomatically and not to involve yourself in, in, in other people's conflicts when you yourself have got a lot of your plate, but it's a different situation when you're being fired upon. Uh, you know, when somebody shoots at you, then then there are consequences. It's quite obvious. So, Amir, as a private citizen, not speaking on behalf of the government, not speaking on behalf of Likud, though you do control a very important caucus within Likud party, you are not speaking on their behalf, simply as a person, as an Israeli citizen. What is your view? What is just retribution that the Russians deserve to face for what they've done against the Israelis? I think that it is important uh, that Russia pays the price. Uh, I don't know. I hope maybe war will end by then in victory for Ukraine. But if war has not ended uh, by by the time we have finished our, with our own business, then I think that uh, Israeli weapons should find their way uh, to uh, uh, to the Ukrainian army in such a way as uh, the Kremlin and its regime understands that they pay a very, very heavy price in blood, courtesy of their, po- of their policies in Ukraine and in the Middle East. It is important that they understand that. In the same way that they understand that their soldiers are being killed by a um, Western weapon, right? It's a, it's very, the message is very clear. Then, then if you want... Israel has to be part of the Western coalition, and the price that Russia pays has to include the price, uh, uh, if you want, coming from Israel. So at this point, as we've talked about, Israeli society has changed. People recognize the threats. Uh, they're emanating from Moscow, from Tehran, obviously, for many years. At this point, do you think that it's going to be a shift in how we deal with countries like Russia, like Iran, where before sort of, kick, as I say, kick the can down the road, and just try to have buy peace time by time. Do you think it's ready for a more drastic approach in a, in dealing with these state actors that are sponsoring terrorism? Yes, yes. I think the Israeli society has gone through a major trauma, probably the worst trauma we've gone through ever uh, since the independence of Israel. I think this is worse, probably, than what we went through in the Yom Kippur War 50 years ago. Um, and this will have consequences. Uh, the Israeli society is going to, be, to become much more hawkish uh, and have much less patience for its enemies uh, because the severity and the barbarity and the sadism of what we have gone through uh, will not go unpunished. And people who are the enemies of Israel will pay a steep price, all of them. Don't, miss, don't get me wrong. Every single one will, get, will have to pay a price and will understand that Jewish blood does not come for free. They will pay a price, whoever they are. That's clear. Now, exactly who will pay what is, of course, dependent on the specific circumstances. But uh, there will be a price. I'm sure of that. Amir, I appreciate your time today. Thank you.